All right, so this is going to be a discussion about the overall state of the network hardware and um, various pieces and parts of what's going on, mostly on the network side, but also some of what the network pieces are attaching to and what they're all doing. So uh, I've made a number of changes uh, since the last one of these videos that I did. Um, Sunsetted some parts, moved other things around, um, all in. Um, I've got the network in a place that I'm really, really happy with right now. Um, primarily around the new Microtech Cloud Core router. Um, that has really given me a lot of leverage to do some really cool stuff. So without any further ado, let's switch over to the network diagram. Okay. And so here we've got the network diagram and we're going to start over here on the far right hand side, which is going to be our internet. Internet is a Verizon Fios uh, fiber connection coming in. And that's going to come into this Microtech Cloud Core router. And that's going to be this gold connection here um, as it is a um, Ethernet cable from the um, box into the uh, condo. And that comes in and is bonded to that particular pair and then fed out to the rest of the network. Now, one of the things that I have done with this Microtech Cloud Core router is I've put the other ports into bridge mode so that they are all um, bridged and allowed to send traffic back and forth in between each other. And you'll see that I have the vast majority of my fiber is plugged into that. So um, what that does is allows me um, quite a bit of leeway as far as pulling things in and running different um, applications and devices. I have sunset almost all of my um, high-speed Ethernet in exchange for uh, fiber optic. So uh, usually in these cases, it's going to be a one-to-one -one swap where I've changed out a, a 10 gig Ethernet for a 10 gig fiber connection, but the fiber is just um, kind of the direction that I'm going now is moving things over into that fiber rather than being on Ethernet. And so what you'll notice here is that there is a lack of a... Um, switch up at the top that was originally doing all of my high-speed Ethernet connections. Um, again, as I've kind of moved out of the Ethernet and into fiber, I've decided to retire that switch um, from the stack because it really wasn't serving a lot of function at that point. So um, if we go and we look here, we've got the 10 gig fiber is going to be coming into uh, this switch is going to serve both our WAPs, so all three of the WAPs are running off of fiber connections. And then you've also got the um, fiber connections for the main computer that I'm uh, recording these types of videos on, um, just my day in, day out computer is going to be a 10 gig fiber connection. I've also got two dark cables currently for the HPE server uh, that are 10 gig connections, um, which are currently um, overshadowed by the 100 gig connection. Depending on what I do with the HPE server, these may come back online um, if I remove that 100 gig connection in exchange for more accelerators. So, um, we also have going in between these uh, devices from the cloud core router down into the um, 48 port um, Microtech switch is going to be one 10 gig connection bridging those two devices together. Uh, and that allows for fast and seamless data transitions um, in between the 48 port and the cloud core router. The other part that you'll notice is that we do have one direct copper cable. That is a 40 gig link going in between the Microtech 100 gig switch and the Microtech 48 port switch, which then daisy chains back down to the cloud core router. So I am bottlenecked um, with stuff going in and out of the 100 gig switch by 10 gig links. I was hoping to get the 25 gig uh, NICs uh, connected down to that 40 gig port and get a 25 gig link going, but unfortunately run into a lot of issues on trying to make that work. Um, still technically on the agenda, but um, 
nothing uh, moving on that front right now. So um, you'll also see I've got a lot of dark uh, copper currently in that 48 port switch. In fact, most of them are not populated, but the uh, goal with the 48 port switch is it covers most of the um, like integrated lights out management for the super micro, the gigabyte, the HPE, trip light. Um, it also does any of the um, security systems, anything that doesn't need um, high speed data runs across this uh, 48 port switch. And then again, for stuff that's hanging off of the um, Wi Fi network, you know, you've got your printers, you've got uh, various computer devices, cell phones, anything that lives on the Wi-Fi network all ties back into the original TP-Link decos. Um, I probably need to do a follow-up video on the TP-Link decos. Um, while the Wi-Fi 7 has been a, can be a, an amazing piece and functionality because it adds a lot of speed and flexibility, it has been uh, riddled with issues uh, to the point where um, I retired the ability for the TP-Link to run the network anymore. It is now just in access point mode with all of the heavy lifting now being done by the Cloud Core router instead. Um, and again, that, that was a pretty large change inside the network and uh, was a much needed one because it just was really, really struggling to keep up with what I was doing and how I was doing it. And again, uh, Cloud Core Router won't go into too much detail on that, but it runs a lot of services that I was originally pushing off onto various servers, uh, now live natively inside that Cloud Core Router, which is really cool. You got WireGuard, you've got, um, uh, ad block, uh, all kinds of things like that all live inside this cloud core router and it's still underutilized. This guy is really designed for a medium sized business. Um, and you know, again, using it in a home lab is, uh, probably not its original target market, but it works really well. Um, and the thing that I will state on all of these switches is how quiet these guys are. Um, you can get used enterprise gear that is technically faster or more capable than this, but these are livable. Um, you don't have those high pitch squealing um, fans running at all the time. You know, when you power one up, yeah, you can tell it can get... Um, pretty loud, but when it's actually in just the standard run mode, these are very quiet switches overall. i um, been very happy with them. And they're all dual redundant power supplies, that type of good stuff. If I had one uh, gripe would be the uh, 100 gig switch. I don't like the uh, power supplies coming in on the front. It just messes with the whole aesthetic of the rest of the system. But it is what it is. And so let's go, let's see if I can zoom in a couple and then come down over here. So we've got the 100 gig fiber switches. What do they do and why do they do what they do? So we've got three primary servers in the rack. One of them is currently out for service. That's the Gigabyte Render Server. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know I've had a lot of issues out of this uh, render server with USB polling. So that is technically out in the um, RMA process. They're going to try and see if they can figure out what's going on with it. So currently, the render server is not in line, but um, for its intended use, the render server is what would ingest videos like this and then allow me to... Um, push all of that data um, into uh, DaVinci Resolve and then render out those videos um, in a very timely fashion. So this guy is a very powerful server um, with a lot of um, CPU cores, a lot of RAM, a lot of everything. It's um, it's got It's got the chops to do it um, and has been a very, um, other than the USB issues, very solid server. Uh, the next one down is the 256 terabyte file server. 
Uh, this guy is running 16 16 terabyte drives, um, which gives a before uh, ZFS um, uh, takes its stab at it, it would be 256 terabytes of available storage. From that, um, with the RAID arrays that I'm using on that, you do get less, but I do have failover so that I could lose four drives out of the um, lot and still be fine. This guy is um, insanely stable. Um, the only issue that I've had so far with it is I did have a power supply that had a fan that was failing on it. And that, um, once I got that swapped out, again, really, really stable server. This was originally supposed to be like the one-stop catch-all server. And um, it changed quite a bit in its role. It's now really dedicated towards file server. Um, running some applications like Jellyfin and other things like that. But for the most part, it's just the file server and it chugs along very nicely. It does not have a lot of downtime in it uh, whatsoever. It's um, very easy to work with, very um, stable is the, the word that I would use there. And again, overbuilt for its application, but it does it exceptionally well. And then the last one on the list here is going to be that HPE ProLiant uh, DL580 Gen 9. Uh, this guy is a bit of a monster from back in the day. Um, one of those really cool things that I was able to get off of eBay for pennies on the dollar. And um, this guy does uh, most of my AI um, machine learning stuff. So any of my large language models and things like that are being run on this guy here. Uh, currently, it is holding three MI100s in there um, and allowing me to mess around with uh, some pretty large, large language models, um, given the amount of storage and applications that this guy has. Um, the standout feature with that uh, HPE ProLiant is its insane amount of RAM that it can hold. Um, I'm not using it to its fullest uh, potential, but it's got two terabytes of RAM. Um, and again, you're usually talking hard drives would be terabytes, whereas this is system memory is in the terabytes range. So this guy is really powerful and does um, a lot of really cool stuff when it comes to large language models. Um, I've put out a couple of videos on some uh, various backend pieces and things like that that are... Um, uh, learnings on this one, but yeah, this continues to be a really cool server. Um, and then we've got all of the uh, lights out management devices, so Super Micro Gigabyte, HP, Triplight, all of these guys have um, out of band management stuff that are all coming in via those uh, copper links as well. And so this is kind of a brief overview of what the network looks like, uh, what it's all doing, where it's all going. Um, and so, yeah, I have now completely transitioned to an entire Microtech uh, lineup. I don't have any other switches that are in the mix other than the Microtechs at this point. Um, everything is running um, single mode fiber, which is indicated by these yellow lines here. Um, and, you know, we're pushing a lot of data, especially when I'm transferring stuff back and forth in between um, the file server with my language models and then the HPE server when it's ingesting those models. So again, uh, it's been an overview. Let me switch back over to this one of what the network currently is, what we're doing with it all, and um, kind of what makes it all tick. So I appreciate the time.